So making a tic-tac-toe game is a really fun project if you're learning to code with JavaScript and this is going to be a good project for you to follow along with because we're going to be coding up the entire tic-tac-toe app using just JavaScript. So by the end of the tutorial you should have a good idea of how to use JavaScript to make new things on your page. So let's dive straight in and start coding up the JavaScript for our tic-tac-toe app. So over here in Visual Studio Code, I've got a HTML page set up that's been previewed with the live server extension because we're still going to need to have a HTML page to run our code in the browser. And I've also linked a CSS and a JavaScript file. And even though we can create all of our styles with JavaScript, which I'll show you later on in the tutorial, to save us some time, I'm going to create some classes within our CSS. And you can compare the two ways of styling elements that you create with JavaScript in these two ways, and you can decide which one you prefer and which one is best. But let's go over to our JavaScript file and start coding up our tic-tac-toe game. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just, just to demonstrate how to create elements with JavaScript, we're going to put a title on the page uh, for the app. So let's create a new heading level one tag. And to do that, I'm going to create a new variable. And I'm going to call it title lm. So throughout the rest of this tutorial, for any HTML elements that I actually create, I'm going to put the word lm on the end of the variable name so that we know that it's actually a HTML element and we can uh, deal with it accordingly. But to create a new element on the document object, we can actually call a function called create element. And this actually accepts a string and we need to give it the tag name that we want to create. So in this instance, I'm going to create a heading level one tag. Then from that variable, we can actually access all of the properties of the element as if we'd actually selected it from an existing HTML document. So for example, we can update its text content and give it a value. So let's just give our heading level one tag a text content value of tic-tac-toe. And then to actually get that to appear on the page, we need to append it to another part of the actual document. So from our document object, we have access to the body tag, which if you look in the HTML that we've got is the only thing that we've got within our actual visible part of our web page. So on our body tag, we can just call the append child function. And then all we do is pass it the name of the variable that's holding our new element uh, into there. And as you can see in our preview, that's added a new heading level one tag with the value of the text content that we've supplied. So that's the basic process of creating a new element with JavaScript and adding it to the page. What I can do though is actually create functions that will allow these creations of these elements to be a little bit more flexible. So here, for example, I can create an arrow function that basically wraps the code that we've just created. I'll call that function create title. And it just takes one argument, which is a string of title. And then we can just use that to actually put into our text content. And now we've got a dynamic function where we can assign any title that we like. So for example, if we wanted to call that within our app, I'd say create title. And then we pass in the string of tic-tac-toe. And you should find that there's no change because we're calling that function with the same string as we had in before. We've still got our heading level one tag. So I just wanted to show you that quickly because we'll be using this sort of approach to create all of the other elements that we need for our tic-tac-toe game, including the board and also the finished state where we can actually restart and create a new game. So that's our new our function to create a title. Before we go on, we need to have some variables set up which we can reuse throughout the rest of our functions so that we know which play is playing and also keep track of the actual game board so that we know when someone's actually won. So up here, before we do anything else, I'm just going to, in the global part of our app.js file, we're going to have two players and I'm going to store them in an array. And I'm going to just use the string values of O and X. And we'll actually use these to actually fill in the squares on the board when the player is playing. And also, we're going to have a game board variable, which will be an array that represents each square on the actual game board. So there'll be nine squares in total. So it would look something like this with each of these empty strings uh, being one of the empty squares when we first start up. But the new lines here are just for presentation because when I actually save my uh, code here, the formatter that I've got set up will just put these all on one line. But you can indeed see that there are nine squares and they're all in sequence in that array. that will become a little bit more obvious how we're going to use those as we progress with our app. Uh, but we want a couple of other variables as well. Uh, we don't want to necessarily set these as an initial value to start off with. But we're going to have uh, a variable throughout the rest of the app which keeps track of what the current player is or who the current player is. And we'll also have another variable here 
which is going to be Game Board LM. So this is going to be a reference to the Game Board element, which we're going to be building up on the page here at the moment. So as you saw with the Create Title function, that will be an element that we we'll create here, and then we can manipulate throughout the rest of the app. And I'm mainly defining it here so that we've got the opportunity to reset it uh, when the game has finished. But that's enough of the variables that we need to have for our app. Let's carry on with some more creation functions uh, for creating some more apps. So the next thing I want to create is the actual game board itself. So I'm going to create a new function here called make game board LM. And it's just a simple arrow function here. And similar to what we had before, I'm going to create a game board element variable, which is going to be the result of the document.create element function. And this time I'm going to actually just create a div element. And I mentioned before about adding the styles using JavaScript. And so the first approach that we're going to do for this is just to simply add a class onto this newly created element before we add it into the page. So let's just say the game board element dot class list dot add. We're going to add this game board class. And this time, instead of actually just appending this element directly to the document body, as we did with the title, I'm just going to actually return the, the actual element that we're creating from this function. So the other thing we want to do is create the squares that are going to consist of the grid that are inside of the game board. So I'm just going to create another function here called make square lm. Uh, this time I'm actually going to pass in an argument to this, so we're going to give each of the squares a number so they can be identified. And then we're just going to create another div. So we'll say this square element is equal to document.create element and it's div again. And for that square element, we're just going to access its class list and add a game square class. And we're just going to leave that function there for the moment. Uh, we will come back and add some more functionality when we want to add the uh, click events to it. Uh, but just for the moment, we want to get it up and running and styled in the browser. But just before we do that, we want to actually make sure these elements are on the page because the only thing we've got actually appended to the body of our HTML at the moment is the title. So I'm going to create a function down here and we'll call it reset game. Uh, and the reason it's called reset is because we'll be able to call it after the uh, game has finished and it needs to be restarted. So we're just making this uh, function multi-purpose really. So for the game board element that we defined at the top of our JavaScript code here, we're just going to make sure that that is equal to a new game board. So we're going to say make game board element, we're going to call that function that we uh, just created above. And then to populate the grid or the squares in the actual game, we're just going to use a for loop. So we'll say for let square uh, equals zero. We'll start at zero. And then while square is less than nine, and square uh, plus plus. For each loop, we're going to make a new square element. And we'll just pass in the number that's inside of the square variable in the loop. But instead of appending this to the document body, we can actually append it to another element. Uh, and in this case, we've got the game board element that we've just created above here. So we're going to append all of those squares to inside of that element for the game board. Of course, this still won't show up on the page until we actually put this game board element into the HTML. So we do need to make another call here to document body .append child, and then pass in the game board element variable that we've created. And we should find if we have a look over here in our elements section of our preview uh, that there's nothing there. And that is because we haven't actually called this function yet. So we've created the title, you can see that there. But straight after that, we need to call this reset game function uh, to actually create the game board and add it into the document. Uh, we should find that there now, uh, which it is still not there. So let's have a look uh, in our console. So we have got some errors here. Uh, so yes, the problem we've got here is of not calling append child, uh, which I meant to do here. So on the game board element, we're going to append the result of this make square element rather than just trying to call that function on there. And finally, there's one more error there, and that's because we're not actually returning uh, the element from here. So we'll say return square element, and that should get us all up and running. Uh, so no more errors in the console. Uh, but you should be able to see now in the markup that we've got our uh, tic-tac-toe title and we've also got the game board and we've got all those game square elements inside of there as well.
So there's a few little errors in our code, uh, but hopefully now we're up and running with our game squares and also our game board. Uh, so what we'll do at this point is we'll just take a breather from the JavaScript and we're going to style up this game board because you can't actually see it on the page because they're just a bunch of empty divs. So we'll go over to our app.css and there's not a huge amount of code that we were going to put in here, but this is just demonstrating how you can use JavaScript to dynamically add your classes uh, to the elements that you're creating. Uh, but let's just start off with a few simple styles. So we'll set our box size into be border box. For the body, I'm just going to say uh, the font family is going to be, we'll use monospace. And we'll also set some padding on the body element as well to push everything in so you can see it a bit easier. The heading level one tag that we've created, we know that's going to be there because we're creating it with that function. Let's just set the font size to be slightly larger. So onto the actual game board itself, let's target that game board class that we're adding uh, to the div when we're creating it. So I'm going to set an explicit height of 450 pixels and we'll say a width of 450 pixels. I'm going to set the display property of this to grid and the way grid display works is you can supply templates to the columns and rows and you can do some funky stuff with this but just to show you that each column will be 150 pixels wide and also the same thing for rows as well and just to make sure everything's lined up we'll set to justify items uh, to be centered and so also the alignment of those items will be centered too. Okay so the other thing we're creating inside of the game board are the squares themselves so let's uh, target the game square class that we're adding to all of those elements that we're creating uh, so for the display of this it's going to be flex and again, just to make sure everything's lining up, content is going to be centered and the items centered. Let's go for a big font size as well. So we'll say 100 pixels. And let's just make sure that the height and the width are matching the grid cell that they're being put into. And the other thing we're going to do is put in some border so that we get the uh, tic traditional tic-tac-toe style uh, grid. So one pixels solid and black on the right and then also on the bottom as well and just so it looks like each of these cells is clickable we'll say cursor is pointer because we're going to be setting up an event that will actually trigger the uh, filling out of those uh, tic-tac-toe squares. Uh, one final thing with the game square as well uh, we'll just say when you hover over it oops, hover, we'll set to the background colour uh, to be a light uh, grey. Now, so there you go, you can see those classes are being applied and we've got the borders and we've got the hover effect in there as well. I'll just close this down here. Uh, the only problem is that the borders are working a bit too well because we don't want this border on these elements down here and also on the bottom, we want to take it off that bottom row as well. Uh, so we've got the traditional tic-tac-toe grid. So we can use a couple of CSS rules to uh, sort that out. So for the game square, we're going to target the nth child and on the three end, so for every third uh, item that's inside of the game board, so every third game square, we'll just say the border uh, right is none, we can use zero and get rid of that one on the right hand side and to get rid of the bottom one uh, we say game square and then nth child uh, and then we say n plus seven so this skips to the seventh item in the actual list of game squares and then there's some CSS voodoo that says everything else after that we also apply this rule too which could be a problem if we wanted it uh, some other way, uh, but for our purposes it will just help us to remove that uh, border from the uh, bottom of the game board. So that is all the CSS that we're going to need for our app. I promise everything else will be done with JavaScript, but this has obviously saved us a lot of time because some of these rules will be a bit tricky to set up with JavaScript, although it is possible. And you'll see a way to do that shortly, how we can actually use JavaScript to add stars to some of these elements that we're creating. Uh, but let's make a start on actually getting the game to work. So on this make square lem function here, we're actually just making the element and then just passing it back. But it does give us an opportunity to set up an event listener. So we could do this globally, so an event listener wherever you click on the page, but we might as well set up an event listener for each of these squares and get the uh, actual contents of that square to be filled in when the event is fired. So you do this in exactly the same way you would do for any other element that you may have selected from a HTML document. So from this square element that we've created inside the function, we'll say add event listener, and of course it's the click event that we want to listen to. 
and in this event, uh, in, sorry, in this function that we get passed back here, we actually have access to the event that's fired as a variable. And from that event, we can actually get the target. So I'm just going to destructure that from the event object. And the target is basically the HTML element that's being pressed. So if I click this element over here, this is the actual target that's going to be put into this variable here, uh, which is really useful because then we can start making some changes to it. Uh, for example, we might want to set the target uh, text content uh, and we're just going to set it to be an X to start off with. And the other thing we want to do is actually let JavaScript know which part of the game board has been updated. So if you remember, we set that up in our constants up here. So this game board is going to represent each of the squares. So we need to figure out which one's been clicked and then insert that into uh, that part of the array. So that's just a case of accessing that global game board variable. And because in our function when we're creating the square element, we've got access to the number in the position in the array, we can just use that square number variable there. And then again, we'll just set that to X. And the other things we want to do in here is just to make sure that, that has anyone won, uh, to make sure if we want to finish the game or not. And then we want to switch different between the different players, so between X's and O's, or as we used to call it when I was growing up, noughts and crosses. And we want to switch between each player. Uh, so let's actually save that and just test that's working. So we should find that an X gets put into every uh, square if we do that. Uh, so two things, we don't want it to be an X every time, we want to switch the players. So let's have a look at creating a way of flipping between the uh, the two different players. So let's create a function. We'll say, we'll say switch player. And this will just be a simple function again. So I'm going to spell this out exactly what we're doing. There are other ways to do it with ternary operators, for example. But I'm going to say if the current player variable, which is defined up here, it's currently empty, if that is equal uh, to players zero, so that will be the O's to start off with, uh, then we're just going to uh, flip it. So we'll say the current player is then equal to players one. Uh, otherwise, we're going to say the current player is equal to players oops, zero. So we can then call that switch uh, players function here. So that will flip between the different players and actually enable us to use this current player variable to say what value should be put inside of both the visible square element on the page and also the game board as well. Of course, we want to initialize this as well. So let's, uh, in our reset game, function just after we've actually created the uh, game board itself and the elements inside it, we'll say the current player is equal to oh, players zero. So now what we should find is every time we click on an element in our game board that we get a different player icon flipping between O's and X's. There is one slight problem with our current setup and that is if you click on any of the squares again in the game board you can see they're flipping, uh, it's changing the actual game which might not be quite fair if you're playing with someone else so we need to prevent that from happening and there's a, an easy way we can do that with this event listener. So this is the problem, the event listener is set up and fired for every uh, click on the actual square element but we can pass in some options to that and in particular the once property and if we say once is true if we try that again you can see I can't actually go out back and click on any of those elements again uh, because the event listener is removed uh, once it's actually fired. So that's a handy little tip if you only want an event to fire once on a particular element. So we've actually got a semi-working game now we can play tic-tac-toe uh, but we want the computer the browser the app to actually tell us when the game is finished and when someone's won. Uh, so that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to actually work on a function that will check if the game has finished. So just after the switch player function, we'll create a new function called check board. And the way this is going to work is, if you remember, we've got this game board variable that's set up at the top of our app, and this holds just an array of all of the squares values and, and what's, what's actually been uh, clicked by the users. So in terms of the array, it will look something like this. So we'll have, it'll start position one, position two, position three, and then it goes on to three, four, and five. And then finally, we've got six, seven, 
and 8. So those are the index positions of the actual array for the game board va variable that we've got set up. But you can see here that if you arrange it in this certain way, it looks exactly like the tic-tac-toe board that we've got. So we can actually define some winning states based on these numbers. So for example, if in the positions of 0, 1 and 2, we have all O's or all X's, then that particular player has won. And likewise, if we say 0, 4 and 8, then we've got a diagonal win. And we just need to check that those positions, those items in the array, have all got the same counter piece in there. So we can do that by first of all setting up an array of all those winning states. Now I'm just going to copy and paste this in here now, save writing it out. But you can see here that, for example, 0, 1 and 2 is a winning state because we've got a row and 0, 4, and 8 is also the diagonal win. So we can check all of these and check the items that are in those positions, and if they all match, then that player has won. So to do that, we could write a for loop to loop through all of those winning states. So we we'll say for each uh, win state of winning states, well, first of all, it just extracts all of the positions uh, out of the array. So I'll use some destructuring here. So we'll say position 1, uh, position 2, and position 3 is equal to the win state. And then we'll just write a really meaty if statement here. So we're going to reference the global game board and we'll say if the item that's at position 1, uh, first of all we want to check that it's not an empty string, whether a player actually has uh, filled something out there, and the position at game board uh, position 1 sorry, is equal to well, we need to check the next position, so we'll say the game board at position 2. So if we were just checking the first row, for example, here we're just checking is the item that's in this first square here equal to the item in the second square here, and then we also need to check that the third one is correct as well. So we'll say uh, is the position at, oh sorry, is the game board at position, make sure I spell this right, I have a habit of spelling position wrong. So is the game board at position 1? equal to the game board at position oh, there we go position three and that is our if statement there oops just missed extra space there so let's just remove that now it's laid out a bit better we can see that a bit easier so hopefully you can see that we're checking each of the positions on the game board to see if they match to see if it's the same uh, character the same player that's actually placed a piece and if that if statement is true, for the moment I'm just going to use an alert to let us know. Uh, so we'll say uh, the game board, uh, the piece at position 1, uh, we're just going to say wins. So it'll say uh, O's win or X's win, uh, and that will alert us in the browser to let us know if that is true. So we should be able to play a game now, but we just need to run this function inside of the event when the square element is clicked. So here is the final piece here, so let's just check call the checkboard function before we try and switch the player. Let's close that down again. So we should now be able to play a game. Uh, let's just fill out some squares. So you should be able to see there that we're getting the alert saying X is win, and uh, it should update the text content, but I think just the way the uh, event loop works in the browser there, it's just preventing that from happening. Uh, but we're not going to be using alerts to let the uh, user know that's finished. But you can see there now we can play a game of tic-tac-toe. The only thing it won't do for us at the moment is actually do a draw. Uh, so if we just go through and do a draw state, so uh, although the game's finished and we can't click on anything else now, it should alert us to let us know that there's a draw has happened. So let's just put that into our checkboard function as well. So we're going to run through all of these uh, if statements first, just check there's no winning states. Uh, but if there's not, we'll find out have all the squares been used. And for that, we're just going to go through the game board state, so this is the array of all the values that have been filled out, and just check every one of them, and for each square, which is going to say is the square not equal to an empty string, which is what they're initialized as. So if there are no empty strings, then that means that all of the game board uh, positions have been filled out, uh, so all the squares have been used. So in another if statement here, if all the squares have been used, we'll just say alert, uh, oops, it's a draw. But we only want to run this code if there isn't a winning state, because otherwise we'll get a win uh, alert and we'll also get a draw alert if all the squares have been used on the, the last go. So to stop that from happening, if a winning state is found, we're just going to return early from the function. So we'll just drop a return statement there as well. So let's try out the draw functionality here. 
So that should give us a draw. And you can see we get the alert coming up saying it's a draw when the uh, last square is filled out. OK, so our game's a bit more complete now. We can have a win state for either player or a draw state. Uh, but we want to actually use something a bit nicer than just the inbuilt browser alert function to let someone know. So we're actually going to create an overlay on top of the project, on top of the app, when we're in a, a win or a draw state. Uh, and just we can provide some more interesting elements, a bit like a modal popping up just to let the user know that the game is finished. So to do that, we're going to need to create a function. We're going to need to create quite a lot of elements for this. So this is where creating the classes for the styling would be really useful, but I'm going to do this the hard way to show you how you can, if you want to, uh, add your styles directly using JavaScript. So let's create a new uh, function here called uh, complete game. Uh, and we'll also pass in a message to this as well. So the function won't really know actually who's won. It'll just display the message on the page, whether it's a draw or someone winning. And to get the effect that we're after, I'm going to create uh, what I'm going to call an overlay element. So this will be like the backdrop for this uh, win state. So we'll create an element and it'll just be a div. And for the overlay element, I'm going to first of all access its style uh, property, which is actually an object of all the style properties that are available. And I'm going to set its position to be fixed. So this is the way that you would add styles in using JavaScript, uh, the inline styles, to the element. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is set the top uh, to be zero, and left and bottom and right as well. So left, right and bottom. So what this will do is just create a fixed element across the whole entire page so nothing else can be clicked underneath it. And also we're going to set the background colour. So notice with the background colour when I assign this property uh, it needs to be camel cased like this so you'd expect it to maybe have hyphen but obviously that's not allowed in JavaScript variable names and so forth. Uh, so we need to style it like this. So for that I'm going to set an RGB value of black uh, with 0.8 opacity just so you can still see the, the game underneath it and also uh, some more styles here we're going to set the display of that to be flex and the flex direction notice again the camel casing here for that will be a column and we also want to justify the content to be centered and also uh, align items to be centered and also text align also to be centered as well. So we can append this to the body uh, when we are ready to show it. So we'll say document dot, uh, sorry, body dot append child and then the overlay element. Uh, and what I'm going to do, just so I don't have to actually keep playing the game to show you this, uh, while well, I'm going to run this function every time the uh, page refreshes, and we'll pass in a variable of just x's wins, for example. So now you can see when I'm saving my work as I'm going along, the live server's updating and we're showing, we're running this complete game function and the overlay is being appended onto the actual uh, web page that we're working on. Uh, so that's not the only thing we want. We want to show the user who's actually won and then give them the option to restart. So let's first of all create a message element and that'll be document.createElement. This time we'll go for a heading level two tag. And for the message element, uh, we'll set the text content equal to the message that's passed in. So that'll be coming from the function parameter, the function argument. And we also want to set some styling as well. So we'll say uh, the color, so that's the text color, is white. And we'll also put in the font size as well of 100 pixels. So you can see it's a lot more laborious adding in the styles line by line like this. It's much easier if we had a class that we could apply as we did with the game board and the game squares. But just for comparison, this is how you would do it if you wanted to, to not create any style sheets that are linked into your project. You could actually do it all in JavaScript if you wanted to. So on that overlay element, before we add it to the document, uh, we want to append the uh, message element which is the heading level two tag. 
So you, go, you can see we've got the uh, text coming up there, but we need the restart button as well to restart the game. So uh, let's do that next. Uh, so let's create the element to start off with. Restart button lm. Uh, it's document create element uh, button. So we're actually going to create a proper button element here. So for the restart button element, we'll set the text content equal to restart. And the restart button element dot style dot background color uh, is equal to transparent. So we can get uh, the background coming through on that. Uh, also for styling, we want to set the color to be white. I think it will be black initially, so let's change that. Uh, we also want to set a border on it so you, the user can see where to click. We'll just say one pixel, solid white. And then also for the padding, uh, we'll have 10 pixels on the top and bottom and then 30 pixels on the left and right. So with the values that you're assigning, you can see this is how you would do it in a CSS class. Uh, so you can use that same sort of uh, syntax with everything separated by spaces. So just to let you know that you can do it like that as well, uh, rather than uh, targeting padding left, padding right, etc. Uh, so let's just add that in. So we want the uh, overlay element dot append child restart button element you should see that appearing on the page now as well we could probably make it a bit bigger if we wanted to let's just, let's change the font size on that because it's quite small uh, font size let's say 30 pixels and of course you can style it however you like but that'll do for our uh, demonstration so before we append the restart button to the overlay element, uh, we actually want to set up an event listener so that when it's clicked, uh, it will actually remove the entire overlay and it, it ultimately will restart the game as well. So we'll say the restart element, uh, button element, will add an event listener of click. And we don't need to worry about the event that's passed into it too much. Uh, but what we are going to do is say document.body remove child and because we've got a reference to the overlay element stored in a variable, uh, we can just pass in that overlay element uh, variable reference and it will actually find that in the document and remove it, which is a massive advantage to saving your elements like this rather than using something like in a HTML uh, to actually update the content that's on your page. So if we do that and then just uh, click the restart button, you should find that that gets removed. That's removed the overall overlay element. So we just need to fire this function when we know that the uh, winning state has been reached or, or a draw state. So let's grab this complete game function and that is done in this checkboard function. So instead of alerting, we can just replace that with complete game and it should then call that function and create the overlay and let us know actually who's won or if it's a draw. Uh, so I'm just going to remove this call to complete game down here because it's running all the time. So we've got an empty game board, let's just fill it out. So you go, you can see that it's passed in the message of O's winning and it's displayed that with the overlay and if we click restart, it'll remove the overlay but it actually won't reset the game board. You can see it's still in the previous state. But that's actually quite easy to fix because earlier in the code we created a function which is used to actually reset the game board. Uh, so we can do this by just uh, going in here and when the click button is clicked uh, we'll just paste in a reference to the re reset game function and when that's called what it should do is actually make a new game board element and then create new squares and append those inside it. There is a bit of a problem with that which we'll fix but if, let's just uh, demonstrate uh, that working. So let's go to a draw. So we've got a draw, if we click restart uh, we've actually reset the game board, but we've reset it by creating a new one, which is not what we want, uh, but you can see the old game is there. Maybe that is what you want. If that's what you want, you can keep that functionality as it is. Um, but what we're going to do in this reset game is a couple of things. We're going to reset the game board element by removing it from the actual document, and then the game board variable, this one up here that's got all of the arrays of values, we're actually going to reset that as well so that there are no old values in there so the game is starting from fresh again. So what we'll do to actually get rid of the element, the game board element on the page, in the reset game function we'll say if the game board element variable, if that's truthy, if this old game board still exists on the page, then what we can do is say document.body.removeChild game board element 
And again, because that's stored as a variable, we don't need to worry about finding it on the page. We can just use that uh, to be removed from the document. And then the final thing that we'll do with the game state, which is stored in that game board variable, we'll just fill it uh, with the array that's inside of it. We'll fill it with empty strings, which will just reset it uh, back to an empty state ready to start a new game. Uh, so let's just try that out again. We should find that this gets removed when the game is finished. So O's win, we'll just click restart. Now you can see we're back to an empty game board. So the old one's been removed and we've got a fresh game board and the game state should have been set back to an array of empty strings as well, ready for the next game. If you want to see how you can generate elements on a page from an external data source, like an API for example, then check out this next tutorial where we're going to be making an FAQ component that takes in some JSON data and generates all of the HTML using JavaScript and then inserts it into the page for the user. But that's it for this tutorial, thanks very much for watching, I'll see you next time.